Welcome. Now let's see a past exam question regarding the free cash flow in our syllabus. Uh, this question is called Lirio Company. Now this question effectively that the examiner tests you about the dividend capacity. Let's revise what we've covered before. Now free cash flows can either be the free cash flows to the entire firm which means before paying the debt holders and the equity holders. It can also be the free cash flows to equity, which means after paying the debt holders, how much uh, the amount of money left for the equity holder. Now for the equity holder, in effect, we are effectively paying all this cash to the equity holder. We should have paid all the cash to the uh, shareholders. However, in practice, we usually don't do that, uh, and this is why we look at the dividend policy later on. However, the dividend capacity is what I mean by the free cash flow to equity. Okay, Just to be the same concept here, where not you are capable of paying dividends to your shareholders, in other words. Now, to do this, as you can see, firstly, let's have a go at the requirements We've given nine marks for this question. For example, estimate in this exam means to calculate. So calculate the dividend capacity okay, prior to investing in this large project. So it effectively, it means that before we invest into this particular project, we need to see whether or not we will be better off. Okay? So in the past, that we've looked at the MPV calculation, but here we are simply looking at the dividend capacity. So in other words, in order to perform the MPV calculation, you need three things. The number of years into the future, free cash flows, which means the relevant cash flows, and the appropriate discount rate. Uh, effectively, we are looking at the free cash flows calculations here, particularly the free cash flows to equity. Now, we are given the scenario such as this. The company is an engineering company involving in projects around the world. Okay, uh, right. It's been grow growing steadily for several years, maintaining a uh, stable dividend growth policy for a number of years now. Okay, it's talking about the dividend policy. And the board is considering bidding for a large project requiring the substantial investment of $40 million. Okay, so this is absolutely fine though. So it seems that this will be the initial investments that we need to think about that. It can be assumed that today is this date and the board is proposing that companies should not raise finance through additional debt to equity. Okay, the board is not aiming to change its capital structure. But instead, it proposes that required finance is to obtain from a combination of funds received from the sale of its equity investment in the European company, so which means it decides to sell shares and get the funds on to finance this project, and from cash flows generated from its normal business activities in the coming two years. Okay, as a result, the current capital structure of 80 million. $1 equity shares and 70 million 5% bond is not expected to change in the foreseeable future. All right. Now, uh, I would say that how much interest expense that we need to pay for in each and every year then? I would say that the interest will be 70 million and times by 5%. The interest will be 3.5 million, so in other words, 3,500 in each and every year. So we will be using that figure to calculate the free cash flows to equity later on. And we also told the board has asked the company's Cheshire department to prepare a discussion paper on the implications of the proposal and the following information on the company's being provided to help in the preparation of the, dis of the discussion paper. Okay, right. So we are going to be using these sort of information and to calculate the free cash flows to equity. Let's see that. Firstly, we are given the expected income and cash flow commitments 
before undertaking a large project for the year to the end of February. Okay, so we are told the company's revenue is forecast to grow by 8% next year from a current level of $300 million. Oh, okay then. So which means the growth in revenue will be 8% times by $300 million. Okay. Now, the operating profit margin expected to be 15%. So uh, it is very common in this particular paper that sometimes you're directly given the operating profit margin and simply apply that 15 by timing by the total revenue and you will get the operating profit by deducting other expenses and so on it will give you the free cash flow directly and it is expected that the company will have the following capital investment requirement for the forthcoming year before the impact of a large project okay so uh, we will be using the one two three and four information there and um, to assess the free cash flows to equity before we consider to invest some money into this particular project later on. Now firstly, for every $1 increase in revenue, we'll increase $0.1 in working capital adjustment. Okay, so we will be uh, seeing that because uh, we've got $300 million of revenue and the growth will be 8% on there. So the increase will be 8% times by 300 million, and then we times by 0.1, and that becomes the investment in working capital later on. Number two then, an investment equivalent to the amount of depreciation to keep the non-current asset at the uh, present productive capacity, and the current depreciation charge, including the operating margin, is 25% of the asset of $50 million. And therefore, later on, will be utilising that depreciation expenses of 25% times by 50 million and that becomes 12.5 million and all in thousand which means $12,500 and we will be adjusting for that in the non-cash item by plusing, it, by plusing this back into our free cash flows to equity calculation because as we can see we have already deducted that $12.5 million into our profit to so becomes the cash flow. However, this cannot be deducted when we calculate the cash flow because this is not a cash item at all. Uh, and, and this is why we will be plusing, it, uh, plusing this back. So we will be plusing the non-cash item back later on. So you read the case in the actual exam make sure that you use the highlight function and to include this narrative possibly uh, into your scratch part and to remind yourself when you're reading the case there will be a huge amount of information that you need to deal with. Uh, so what you need to do then is to make sure that the first times that you read this sort of information that uh, you will not get lost okay, uh, in, in, in the question. Number three, a $0.2 in investment in additional non current asset for every $1 increase in revenue. As I said before, the increase in revenue will be 8% and times by $300 million. Okay, so 8% times by $300 million. And we simply times by 0.2, and that will stand for the fact that we spend the money out in buying additional non current asset. Number four there, uh, the $8 million additional investment in other small projects, okay, we need to deduct that as well uh, in our calculation. In addition to the above revenue and profit, the company has one overseas subsidiary, it's called P Company, from which it received a dividend of 80% on profit, okay, so we will see uh, the amount of money that we're going to bring to our group. The company produces a specialist tool sales locally for $60 each, expecting that it will produce and sell 400,000 units so we can compute the total revenue by taking the selling price and the timing by the sales unit. And these two will incur variable cost of 36 and fixed cost of $4 million. Okay, so we will compute the net profit later on. And we're told that our company pays taxes at 25% and the 
and the foreign company pays 20%. Okay. So uh, it seems to me that because uh, we operate overseas, for example, and uh, the company that we receive the dividend, uh, when we receive this back, and surely will pay additional taxes because uh, it's not fair that the overseas taxes lower than our own country's tax. Uh, if this is the case, then our company will certainly invest in overseas and bring this money back into our home country. So if there's a double tax cheating, okay, so for example here, a bilateral tax cheating exists and therefore we bring the profit from the overseas country back to our home country, we will pay additional 5% of taxes on that. And we're also told in addition to this, we are also told about the uh, withholding tax rate of 8% is deducted from any dividend remitted from the overseas subsidiary. Okay, now what do I mean by withholding tax is that if I were to transfer $100 from the overseas subsidiary into our parent company, the overseas subsidiary's local government would deduct $8 from the 100 so the maximum amount of monies that we can transfer will simply, buy, simply be by deducting the withholding tax of $8 from the 100 which means we can uh, remit the maximum of $92 from the overseas subsidiary. Right, um, okay, so we are going to be ignoring the exchange rate fluctuations in this particular question. Right, okay, now... Let's set up our pro forma first of all, uh, because we read through the case information for the very first time, but now let's dive into it. Firstly, C requirements again, is to estimate the dividend capacity. Okay, now it, it, in essence, we are telling the examiner, okay, this is related to part A, we're gonna be uh, dividend capacity, so effectively it's the three, cash flow to equity, okay, in our spreadsheet function here. So I will usually tell my student that firstly, you need to create multiple columns here, and in this case, in order to calculate the free cash flows to equity, so firstly, the first column would be in words, and the second column will be in numbers, okay? So don't mix them all together. Now, uh, looking at the case again, uh, so we are told about the operating profit margin, it's very likely that we start with the operating profit and to uh, making lots of adjustments, okay, related to working capital and the non tasset investments and so on. And also we need to leave a few lines to adjust for the dividend remit, uh, remittance from uh, other countries, subsidiaries. And this could be absolutely fine there. So for example, we've got the operating profit, okay, on the left-hand side. And then we'll need to come up with the profit after tax. Uh, in effect, we need to less, because the interest, because the operating profit simply be the profit before interest and tax. And also we need to less taxes. Um, the reason why we're going to say is less, instead of this one, the minus, is because in words we use less, okay, rather than minus. Minus, you, you can't compute this figure because of the formatting problem. Now, in addition to that, you also need to adjust for any non-cash item, and here is the depreciation in the question, okay, so we need to adjust for that later on. Not only for that, you also need to adjust for any uh, investment decisions cash flows. Okay, we're going to be leaving two lines for that later on. Uh, now, we can compute these figures and we also need to consider uh, the investment in working capital. Okay, so investment in working capital as well. Because when we prepare uh, the statement of cash flows, for example, not only we need to adjust for the cash uh, non-cash item, but also 
the investment in worker capital. Okay. So finally, we also have got the dividend issues that we need to think about okay, later on. But firstly, let's read through the case again. Now, we're given the operating profit margin to be 15% here, and then because we are forecasting the uh, next years, because we are assuming that today is 2016, and we're talking about 2017, so in other words, it's next year, although this year is not 2017 any longer, but uh, looking at the past question, for example, we're assuming that this will be a next year figures. And this is why what will be the future revenue will be 300 times by 1.08, okay? So, now, we open equal, okay, we simply slot the figures in, and that's all we can do. We take 300 million, so please do remember, you don't need to say this is M, okay? Because if you insert that, you can't do the calculations. Simply insert 300. And then times, this is not X, okay, it is this. Multiply, okay, we use this symbol. And this is for 1 plus 8 percent, okay, tell the examiner, yes, you can insert 1.08, it's entirely up to you. And yes, you will say this is for the power of 1, okay, because this is for next year, but we'll not do that now. And then, because we need to calculate the operating profit, we simply times by the operating profit margin of 15%. Now, 15% over here, and that becomes 48.6. Now, in the calculation, usually, we will calculate things all in thousand. And if that's the case then, yes, uh, initially, the 300, I'm assuming that will be a million. Now, if I were to change that to 1,000, and that means, so 300 million, but 300,000, in other words, okay? Now, if I were to change that to 300,000, that would be 48,600. Now, the first thing I would like to do is I would like to format the figures by making these on the right-hand side, okay? And then I will need to have a comma for that, okay? And to reduce the decimal. Uh, this will make your answer look more professional, okay? With the symbol dollars and in thousand, telling the examiner you're rounding the numbers, for example. How about for interest? Well, we just calculate it based on our current capital structures that we need to pay for 5% on top of that $70 million of a bond. So I would say, okay, uh, it's 3,500. We've done the calculation already, but you need to demonstrate your Excel skill to the examiner. And this is why you need to insert the full formula for doing that. 70 million, Okay, in thousand, that would be 70,000 times by 5%. Okay, so we're saying that this will be equals to minus, because we're paying for that, 70,000 and times by 5%. And this will give me 3,500. Okay, so the examiner, when marking your script, will directly check your formula in the cell, as you can see on the screen. Okay, so you don't need to worry about that too much. Now, how about taxes? How about taxes? If I were you, I would like to, yes, move this forward, or I would like to insert, insert the new cell, okay? Insert the new one. Oops. I would like to insert the new one. For example, Because if this is the case then, okay, I will underline this and tell the examiner and this will be uh, the profit before tax. Okay. Right, uh, the profit before tax is there, so we simply sum these figures. We use this function sum, okay, and that becomes 45, 100. And we pay taxes 
uh, on how much or not. Uh, because in our country, we pay tax of 25% now. So we simply open up a, uh, a formula again. So we pay tax and this will be minus 25% and times by the profit before tax. We pay 11, 275. How about a non-cash item? As I said before, a non-cash item will be the notes number two is at 25% times by 50,000, okay? So it just plots this back. So equals to 25% times by 50,000, and that becomes 12,500. How about for investment in working capital though? Investment in working capital is at $1 increase in revenue and $0.1 investments in working capital. So effectively, the increase in revenue, we take 8% times by the revenue of 300 okay so that will be the total increase and times by 0.1 so investment which means we input some money in there in there so that would be minus 0.1 dollars and times by eight percent times by 300 million dollars and that would be two okay in other words Of course, if you were to round this up, of course, uh, it's minus 2.4. However, uh, because 300, I would say 1,000, okay, so that would be 2,400 in other words. How about for the investment decisions that we are going to be making? Okay, we take a tip for that, for all this information in the calculation there. The non current asset for every $1 increase in revenue, 0 0.2, okay. So simply copy this and paste that in and change that to be 0.2. So we spend 4,800 there. Okay, so that will be the additional investment. At the same time, okay, we also have got $8 million in other additional small projects. So other project to be a million or eight thousand in other words. Now finally, let's come now to the dividend calculations here. Okay. Now the dividend calculations here we can start working next to that. Okay. So we can tell the examiner this will be the dividend from the overseas countries that we need to think about that. Now firstly let's see how much profit that the foreign subsidiaries have earned and therefore, we can determine how much dividend that we can receive, okay, based on its profit. Because we are told that we sell for 60, variable cost of 36, and we can determine that contribution, okay. So, uh, the contribution, we simply take that $60 of revenue and to subtract the variable cost of 36, okay. And then we times by the sales unit of 400,000, okay? And that becomes 960, okay, 9.6 million. However, if I were to uh, use what? If I were to use in thousand, which means I will insert 400 units instead of 400,000, okay? So that would be. 9,600 there, okay, again, put a comma next to that, uh, and to insert the symbol all in thousand to the examiner, at the same time, okay, tick tick for that, and also we've got the fixed cost of 4 million, so 4,000 in our words, so less fixed cost, okay, so 4,000 in there, put a comma, Tick, tick, for that. Right. Um, how much for that, though? We can calculate the profit before tax. Sum these figures all together. Okay, 5,600. I mean, less taxes. How much taxes that the subsidiary needs to pay for? We are told it needs to pay 20% on that. So equals to 20% and times by the profit before tax, 
I use subtract, okay? And it will give me the profit after tax or PAT or profit after tax sum. And underlying this, we use control plus U, okay? So profit after tax, 44.80 here. Now, according to the example, it says we need to deduct 8% on the total profit after tax if I were to bring this profit back to our parent. So which means we, only, we can only transfer 92% of that. At the same time, we're also told in this small paragraph, in addition to the above revenue and profit, the company has one overseas subsidiary from which it can receive a dividend of 80% of profit. So in other words, we are not aiming to transfer all those 4480. The dividends that we are going to be transferring will be based on 4480, but only based on 80% of that. Okay, so very, very important idea. At the same time, we need to deduct 8% of the withholding tax, okay? So we need to times by one minus 8% on there. Okay, now, effectively, we are receiving 3297.28 from the overseas subsidiaries. Right, okay, so we simply, for dividends that we are gonna be receiving, will be equal to this figure, okay? Tell the examiner about that, and the examiner can check it directly. At the same time, we need to pay additional taxes on uh, because of the double tax cheated issue. So additional taxes that we need to pay for of 5%, okay, and we use minus. But by how much there? We need to times by the profit before tax of 5,600 on the right-hand side, okay. When we bring this profit back, uh, we need to pay 5% additional taxes on that. So effectively, this question also integrates the transfer pricing issue because when we are transfer price, when we're setting up a transfer price, effectively we are moving profit from one country, from one company in one country to another. So effectively, we can either use buying or selling goods or paying interest, paying royalties or paying dividend, okay, to transfer these profit. So again, yeah, additional taxes will be 280, okay, so then we need to pay. And therefore, the dividend capacity will be equals to sum, okay, just to sum all these figures all together, starting with profit uh, before tax and minus taxes, and plus these and minus that, okay. The dividend capacity in total, we put her underlying Format here, the dividend capacity will be 34,142. Okay. Now, in future questions, there might be questions like we need to adjust for the net debt payment in, in particular to arrive at the dividend capacity, and that's absolutely fine there. So, for example, in this question, for example, if I were to add additional information there, if I were to issue a thousand dollars of debt and we need to pay 200. So the net debt will be, yes, we issue additional of 800, okay? So 800 positive cash will come in again to arrive at the dividend capacity because this dividend capacity is whether or not we're capable of paying dividend. It's just to be the free cash flow to equity and make sure they're ready for that. And the difference between the free cash flows to equity and the free cash flows to firm is where the free cash flows to firm did not deduct any net debt repayment, okay? So make sure that you're ready. Okay, I hope you're absolutely happy with this nine marks question in the free cash flow uh, and make sure that you are ready for that. And, and of course, you can state a few assumptions in there. So for example, uh, where not the tax rates may change in overseas countries to be 20%, where not there will be additional uh, political risk 
that you need to conceal when transferring money uh, to the parents company because in practice there might be lots of red type that you need to follow so for example for for countries such as in uh, uh, highly regulated countries regarding the uh, foreign exchange rates issues countries that they may have lots of red type that you need to follow lots of internal procedures and so on and uh, so uh, you need to consider all these costs involved and whether or not they are uh, being taken into account into the project consideration and, and you can state one or two assumptions at the end and, and this could be absolutely fine there in this particular paper. Okay, I'm going to stop this recording now and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye bye. APC, accounting for your future.